Hey guys, it's Anthony. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're talking about where the market has gone this past week, where we think the market's going this coming week. And if you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader, definitely hit that subscribe button. I personally trade ES and NASDAQ futures. So if you trade that, you'll definitely want to subscribe. It's taken me just over two years to become consistently profitable. Lots of trial and error, lots of lessons learned, lots of losses taken and pain. But over time, it's worth it because once you're consistently profitable, then it's a high income skill you can scale for the rest of your life. So stick with it if you're not profitable yet. And without further ado, let's dive into the charts. We're taking a look at NASDAQ on the daily chart. If you saw my last video, I actually drew out this drawing. I said that we would probably get a rebound up into the resistance to the left, probably a FIB retracement into the 50% of the 618. So if you just drop a FIB from the high to the low, we pass the 50%, we're approaching the 618 at about 15,845. Today's Thursday, pre-market, I think we'll get there. We're gonna have some GDP news come out at 8.30. Right now it's 7.51 a.m. So I think that we'll push up there, we'll get to that 618, maybe even the 70, uh, and then kind of roll back over, as you can see by my drawing here. I took a swing long overnight as my most recent trade. Reason being is because if you take a look at the four hour chart, let me remove these. You'll see that if you look from left to right, we sold off, we broke some swing lows, broke a swing low, broke a swing low, and then here was something very interesting for me. If you see right here, we have boom, this swing low, pushed up, broke this swing high, so this was a bullish market structure shift, we pulled back and we failed to break the low. Once we failed to break the low yesterday after FOMC, I thought, hey, high probability, we target these highs. So I got in a long, uh, once this four hour candle closed, I literally got along at 625 six, six just before uh, 5 p.m. yesterday, EST. Stop was below the lows and then target was above the highs and it was a one to one, perfect for me. And uh, got hit overnight, we're still pushing up now. So this is a, this is a pretty solid trade for me. But now I'm just waiting, um, probably just gonna take some intraday, intraday trades. There's nothing really standing out. Obviously there's some resistance here to the left. So a possible, possible short entry here, shorting uh, right now at about uh, 815. And then, uh, you know, setting the stop above all the highs, uh, recent highs, uh, about 250 points away, TP being down here, targeting this first swing low to break. So, you know, it's about a one, it's about a 1.2 to one. So yeah, you know, I could I could get in a short here on NASDAQ, but I'm gonna be patient because Thursday could be a trend day. We could trend up all day, honestly. So maybe we get up to 15,900, I have no idea. So I'm gonna just probably take some intraday longs today and then I'll see where we're at by the end of the day and then possibly get in a swing short if we're around that 15,900 area because again, if we draw the FIB retracement from high to low, at least there, uh, that's about 70%. So yeah, I'll probably get in a short at about uh, 15,890 and then have my stops above all the highs at about 16,080 and then uh, TP being at about uh, 15,500. So this is something I'm, I'm, I'm looking more for. So yeah, it's plan today, intraday is look for longs and then build a swing short potentially at about 15,900, targeting 15,500 in the coming one to two weeks. ES, there is no opportunity for shorts here whatsoever. We are just consistently breaking out. We made this swing low here, pushed up, uh, pulled back an FOMC and didn't get anywhere near these lows at 45.60. So that was a red flag if you're looking for shorts. You'd want to see us it realistically you want to see us break this 4560 with a FOMC, but we never did. So because of that, you just have to ask yourself where's the next target. Next target was, you know, above all these highs at 4610. Pre-market, we're already much above there. So now if you really zoom out, you say, hey, okay, where's the next resistance on the weekly chart even going back out here? You can see, you know, 4660 to about 4630. So yeah, the next resistance zone is gonna be up 46.32 into 46.60. And if you wanted to short, then that's the first area you would look for shorting. You wouldn't look to short anywhere right now. And since ES has been so much stronger than NASDAQ, maybe once we do finally find a top, we probably just go up into the 46.60, roll over, maybe only get to 45.40, but you know, I'm thinking somewhere around 4,500. If you want to make money, just go along. Yes, don't do, don't take any shorts. 
Another thing I've back tested and looked at quite a bit is just how, you know duration spent away from the 50 moving average. And typically, when we're this far away from the moving average for this long, uh, eventually there is a retest. Typically, the ES rides the 50 moving average, and right now we're up. 4,400 on it. So I would think we're eventually going to retest this 4,500 area for a balance before continuing higher. It's, you know, we've kind of gone vertical. We chopped around a bit and then went vertical again. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we came down to retest to 4,500 before we went up to 4,700. And that's something I would, I would be more in favor of. If you're looking for swing longs, like I personally would not be getting in any swing longs in ES until we, let's say we pushed up to 4,650, hit some resistance and kind of chopped around and then got down to the 4,500 area as the EMA catches up and gets here. So yeah, I would, I would expect us to get down to that 4,500 area before kind of cycling back up and then going towards 4,700. If we go straight to 4,700, it, it would be very impressive. VIX has been consistently getting crushed. Uh, the red flag that I saw for shorts was that yesterday after FOMC, VIX got crushed hard down to 13. So since the VIX was so weak after FOMC ended, I thought that we could have more weakness and because of that, the market would go up. So that's why I also took that NASDAQ long. And now, you know, I don't see why we don't go for new lows on the VIX. So, you know, Thursday, Friday, today, tomorrow, we could just push up in the market. VIX goes, makes a new low, and then we finally get a little correction. But again, little correction is in two, three, four, maybe 5%. I don't see us having any massive correction going you know, to 4,400 on the ES, and I don't see us going below 15,000 on the NASDAQ, but we can certainly go to about 4,500 on ES, which would back test this here, like I said. And then on NASDAQ, we could just go back test and just take out these lows at just below 15,470, come down to about 15,400 to 15,300 as a swing low, buy that swing low, and then target new recent highs above 16,100. You can see DXY, we had the bottom, we pushed up, and then we have more weakness now. Question is, are we going to form a higher recent low and then cycle back up? Potentially, if you just draw a little fib retracement from high to low, we're now at the 50%. So maybe, maybe we, we bottom around here or go a little lower to 100.3 and cycle back up. And if we cycle back up, that shows more weakness for NASDAQ and S&P 500. Question then becomes, can we take out this 101 area? If we can take out the 101 area, then I would start to have a little more confidence that, hey, we're probably targeting 103.6 and we're getting a bigger correction in NASDAQ and S&P 500. Obviously, if we, we, we come back up, set an, another lower high and then take out this swing low, then we're just going to keep pushing up on S&P 500 and NASDAQ. Last thing I want to cover is the put to call ratio. Put to call ratio has been going vertical. And when the put to call ratio goes up very fast, it means that a lot of people are buying puts. And because of that, we're likely going to see a squeeze in the opposite direction because too many people positioned from long to short uh, very quickly. So because of that, we're likely going to have a big green day today, Thursday, uh, maybe tomorrow as well, and then have this put to call ratio go down. And then after that, maybe we get a rug pull. But for now, the, school, the, the pain is going to be to the upside a little bit because we have too many people that flipped short real quick. That's my game plan for the day. So again, intraday longs on ES and NASDAQ. And then in the swing account, probably uh, get a starter position short about 15,880 or 890 because that's a good two to one risk reward ratio. Stop being over the highs, TP above the recent lows on the four hour chart. That's gonna conclude this video. Give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate it. Let me know in the comments down below what we're gonna see more of. Thanks so much for watching. Again, subscribe for more videos just like this, and I'll see you in the next one.